going to be a fun hour to talk to Dr. Pat Flanagan, who has been on the program for quite a few years now, unfortunately. But he's back tonight. His website is phisciences.com. What we're looking at here is a continuing unveiling of the most sophisticated mass scientific mind control and social engineering that the world has probably ever seen and may ever see, ever, because I don't think it's going to last too much longer before it comes down on itself. But the media, as we, it, you remember when, when it was said that the, Marshall McLuhan said the message is the media, or the oh, medium. Yeah. All right, well, it was. It was TV. And just as some people were beginning to grasp the overwhelming power and influence and, and psychologically, emotional, and mental, spiritual subjugation of that media, TV, along comes the Internet, which I think geometrically takes the issue of mass control and influencing that much farther. And then we can, of course, stir into the pot, that cauldron of hell, uh, cell phone radiation, electromagnetic fields, which literally drown us. We're living in a fishbowl. 150 years ago, there was no EMF to speak of, except for a few lightning strikes and maybe some something from space that dropped in now and then. But we are living in a in an environment that the human body simply cannot adapt to quickly enough. And the controllers are, well, you know, 20, 30 years ahead, 40 years ahead in some disciplines, maybe 10 years ahead in others. But the idea of controlling the human mind now is so advanced and so exacting, I'm sure it would have shaken Edward L. Bernays in his grave if he were to be woken and told about it. I mean, it's just amazing what's going on. You you see that as well as anybody. Oh, yes. I, I've been observing it for years, and of course, uh, I've I've studied it extensively, and and they took one of my inventions and uh, put it under secrecy for years because uh, some of the technologies I've developed can be used for mind control. Uh, they can also be used for the greatest good that the human being has ever seen. Uh, that's always a, a two-edged sword, you know, when you Well, yeah, the, the, the human being will never see in this case unless the planet yeah. is completely uh, sub- turned over. Uh, and retooled to put good uh, on the throne of evil. And I, I don't see that happening anytime soon, although I'd, I'd love for it to happen. I don't mean to sound negative, but it is what it is right now, and we are in the hands of people who do not particularly care about the value of human life, happiness, integrity, or anything else. Well, that's true. And, you know, it's uh, Iblis fair-seeming, uh uh, the the all the TV shows and movies program people that think that uh, the darkness wins and that it's good to to have no integrity. The people with no integrity, they're always, you know, they're rich. They drive the best cars and and they end up, you know, winning and beating the other people out. So greed is good. Uh, and and then greed, greed wins. Down. Greed is good, and that, and that message goes yeah. in on several levels. And remember, it is also being enfolded and embedded into the subconscious through these technologies we've briefly mentioned. We'll get into that more as we continue. Exactly. Yeah. The um, the the technologies reinforce, so we're getting it subconsciously, and we're getting it consciously on multi levels. The TV sets, uh, scan rates, and uh, you know, are designed to put people into, uh, you know, alpha states or below and uh, hypnotic trance. And then and then they've got the modulations uh, coming from the Wi-Fi towers and the modulations coming in uh, through subliminal programming on the TV sets and then uh, also through the power lines. There's plenty. Now, of, let, uh, let's tell, let me tell, uh, let me say one thing, and then I would like you to please tell us that anecdote again. That is a classic, and it's crucial, and it was many years ago. Now, the idea that the human mind is an electronic organism, an electronic machine, uh, is, is certainly not what most people envision. They think we're chemical first, what we eat uh, is crucial and all that. It is crucial, but we're electrical first and chemical second. And they, being the scientists who are behind this effort to control people, have decoded much, if not all, of the viable, valuable parts of the human emotion spectrum. The emotional spectrum is known in terms of hertz, 
megahertz, and other kinds of electromagnetic radiation and frequencies, and can be programmed. Uh, we know that people who go near uh, secure military installations will all of a sudden become very nervous and, and frightened and want to leave. They want to get the hell out of there. And that's because the frequency for fear is being broadcast on a perimeter basis all around that facility. This is really older technology. It's not new. Now, what Pat just said is critical. We all know about cell phone towers. We know about the Gwen Towers. We know about satellite applications of electromagnetic fields. We know about the HARP program to pump up into the ionosphere tremendous amounts of electronic energy and then use that to beam back down specific and selected frequencies which can affect small groups or large groups of peoples and populations. But there's another main platform, a main venue, that these kinds of frequencies are actually placed into the human mind at very close range, and it's called the power grid. And Pat was the first one that I ever knew to figure it out. So tell us that story about how those nice, friendly 60 hertz wires in your walls and your 60 hertz powered uh, electronic devices in your home can have a, a dual purpose at the very least. Well, you know, John Lilly was a good friend of mine. We worked together uh, for the Navy on dolphin projects. And uh, John Lilly developed technologies for bypassing the um, uh, mechanisms of the human brain that resist programming. And he developed, um, well, I'll, I'll tell it this way. Uh, uh, my friend Adam Trombley uh, was also a friend of John Lilly's, and he was in Hawaii looking at the power grid, and there are signals coming in in the power grid that have uh, some ultrasonic waveforms and uh, and certain uh, wave shape, and uh, so uh, Adam was looking at this uh, at this grid on the power line, and and I was he, he went at over it. did he went over to Lilly's uh, lab, didn't he? And there was a screen. Showing a waveform, wasn't that no, the way? No, Lily walked in the John, uh, to uh, Adam Trombley's Adams. house, okay. and Adam Trombley had the waveform up on the screen. Oh, I see. And John said to Adam, he said, uh, oh, you know about my waveform? And Adam said, what are you talking about? And then uh, and uh, Adam said, no, this this is coming in on a power grid. And then John Lilly said, oh, so that's what they're doing with my waveform, the Lilly wave. And if you Google the Lilly wave, you'll find just one reference to it. But basically, it's a waveform that enables you to bypass the resistance of the human mind and program the brain. And you can transmit fear. You can transmit any emotion, any kind of information you want on the Lilly wave. And basically, uh, Adam had discovered that they're using it uh, through the power grid. And subsequently, I've been all over the country, all over the world, and measured these things. And apparently, there are black boxes in the power companies that uh, produce the Lilly wave. And, and they're associated with, uh, you know, homeland security or whatever. And Basically, these devices put ultrasonic waveform pulses uh, riding on top of the regular 60 hertz wave. And <laughs> and they uh, are mind control waves, and they're coming into everybody's house. So the Lily wave basically disarms the brain's ability to discern and decide. It just puts it in a neutral state where things just flow right in, much like the flicker of the old TV set will do. First time you watch TV, it takes about two minutes to get into that altered state. It's uh, not beta. It's down in the alpha, almost theta range. You right. become really a zombie. And then after the first time, it's uh, a matter of seconds. The second time you watch television, and you're taken right into that state where things can pour right into your subconscious mind. So the lily wave was used first to disarm the mind and then your theory is, and, and Lily's, and I'm sure Adam's as well, is that the Lily wave was then piggybacked with any kind of known decoded electronic signature that would cause a reaction in the human brain and consciousness. Fascinating. Well, that is correct, and we know the signatures for every emotional state. The signature of fear, the f signature of bliss, the si signature of anger, 
all of these signatures are very easy to duplicate, recreate, and you can, uh, you know, disarm with a lily wave. It goes right in, and then you put whatever you want in there, plus whatever subliminal programming you want. You can create unrest. You can create civil unrest. You can create uh, riots. Uh, you can You can do anything you want. And the amazing part about it is it can also disarm the brain to the extent that the other platforms, Cell Towers, the Gwen Towers, Harp, can also pump up and pump out any number of electronic frequencies that will then have a free ride and entree right into the human mind en masse. This is not just uh, an isolated is- issue. It's a, an amazing thing to consider. We are under such control and influence that uh, the average American, the sheep, will never figure it out. Here's a little piece on the lily wave and why it is uh, the wave of choice, the wave form of choice. The goal was to find an electric current waveform with which animals, that can be us, could be stimulated through implanted electrodes for several hours per day for several months without causing irreversible changes in the threshold by the passage of current through the tissue. All right. Many waveforms, including 60 cycles per second sine wave current, could apparently be used safely for these limited schedules of stimulation. They could not be used for the intensive long-term schedule of chronic stimulation. Electric current passed through the brain can cause at least two distinct types of injury, thermal and electrolytic The technical problem in chronic brain stimulation, and they're using electrodes in this particular uh, study I'm reading about, is to stay above the excitatory threshold and below the injury threshold in the neuronal system under consideration. This result can be achieved most easily by the proper choice of waveforms and their time courses, and less easily by the choice of the range of repetition frequencies and trained durations. So they worked on this and came up with uh, this final statement. The previous waveforms used in neurophysiology and in neurosurgery injured the neurons when unidirectional current passed through the brain. Dr. Lilly developed a new electrical waveform to balance the current, first in one direction and then after a brief interval in the other. Thus, ions moving in the neurons would first be pushed one way and then quickly the other, stimulating the neurons and leaving the ions in their former positions within the neurons. This new waveform was called a balanced bidirectional pulse pair, or the lily wave. Now, what we're talking about here is the lily wave has been introduced and basically piggybacked on 60 hertz AC, which is in every home, every office, every building. And the idea is that it it transmits it. We do know from an electronic reading of any 60 hertz power box with a simple uh, EMF meter, you can pick up electromagnetic fields five, six, seven feet away. So people who are living in a box, in a hamster cage, which is a bedroom, an office, a living room, are surrounded with this stuff. And if they send the lily wave in, piggybacked on top of it with other well, we won't call them control, but we can call them influential frequencies, uh, we have a, a, the perfect way to directly affect masses of people in their homes, offices, and other structures where they hang out. Pat, go ahead. Well, that is correct, and it's used in multi-levels. It's used in microwaves also. Uh, microwave stimulation of the brain. The, the problem with uh, stimulating the brain continuously with microwave or control frequencies is that you can cause damage. You don't want to damage people's brain unless that's your intent. They're course. doing a good enough job on their own. Yeah, but uh, but basically the idea is to stimulate, transmit the information in, return the nerves to the former state, and then the brain doesn't resist it because if the same signal keeps coming in over time, the body can develop a defense against it. The lily wave is, is a waveform that prevents you from building any kind of defense. All right, very good. Now, what we have then, in sum, are a half a dozen uh, primary venues to deliver electromagnetic frequencies 
to elicit some kind of a response in people.